Service presented by Future Smiles Orthodontics. Build a brighter future with a brighter smile. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tano program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Starting now on primetime, the governor will not request the shutdown of all inbound flights despite a letter from Democratic senators. Plus, mandatory quarantine protocols are now in effect for arriving passengers at the Guam International Airport. And also tonight, a man accused of a 2019 murder gets his case thrown out on the basis of double jeopardy. Havare and good evening, everyone. Mandatory quarantine protocols are now in effect for arriving passengers. The measures designed to stop further spread of the coronavirus from off-island will require different actions depending on various factors. Adloop released details of the screening measures today to be overseen by public health. They will apply to all arriving passengers from COVID-19 affected areas. Any passengers exhibiting obvious signs of illness will be subject to immediate isolation and treatment. For passengers with health certificates that show negative results for the previous 72 hours, they will be cleared for release. Passengers without health certificates can fall into two categories. First, if you're arriving from the Philippines, you will be taken directly to an approved quarantine facility. If not arriving from the Philippines, you will be asked to consent to quarantine. If you say yes, you may be quarantined at home if appropriate or at an approved site. If you do not consent, you will still be subject to involuntary quarantine at an approved site. Those sites will be at hotels which have not been identified. Police will be assigned to the quarantine sites to ensure that no hotel staff or guests will have incidental contact with those who are quarantined. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, authorities are shutting down international flights after expanding the community quarantine to the entire northern island of Luzon. Travelers are being advised that they have until Friday to depart or risk being stranded in the country. Lock down the island with a shelter-in-place order for all residents and stop inbound flights. That's what local residents, the Guam Medical Association and the Democrat senators are urging the governor to do to help fight the spread of COVID-19. Chris Barnett has more. I'm only scared and I'm only worried because I'm 70 and she doesn't want to lock down. And the thing about what is she waiting for? So for someone to die with this corona? Is that why she's waiting? Is that the governor's wait, choice is to wait until one of those people die and then lock us down? That hurts. That's really hurting me because I'm 70 and I don't want to leave this world. I have grandchildren of my own. Denny Doe resident Maria calling into our containing COVID morning show telling us she thinks the governor should lock down the island to help stop the spread of COVID-19. And she's not alone. 75% of people polled on our show say they favor a lockdown banning flights into Guam. The Guam Medical Association and even the governor's Democrat supermajority at the legislature sending letters to the Magahaga asking her to call for a shelter-in-place order and stop flights from arriving at the AB Wampat International Airport. One of the governor's biggest allies at the Guam Congress Hall, Speaker Tina Munia Barnes, joining in the COVID convo, saying now is the time to act. If we don't stop this now, how many more of our residents are going to get infected? Senators also urged the governor to ask the Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Customs and U.S. Homeland Security to prohibit all inbound flights as we stop the spread of COVID-19 and recover as a community. We believe a complete shelter in place order of our island is necessary to stop the spread of this pandemic, the letter said. Speaker Barnes saying the people of Guam are asking a lot of questions and they aren't getting many answers. She shares what she says she's hearing from her constituents. We don't have enough test kits. Uh, we need to keep everybody uh, safe. Uh, why can't I get uh, tested? Uh, people say I want to get tested, but we don't have enough. Uh, uh, we don't meet the criteria. 
and people are getting really afraid right now. Meanwhile, the Guam Medical Association, after a meeting with the governor yesterday, sent a letter to Adeloup this morning, also calling for a lockdown. Doctors saying it's the only way to do a thorough trace investigation, isolate COVID-19 patients, and starve the virus. Dr. Ho Wen was in that meeting, and he said the governor is under pressure to make the right call. I think this is the big, biggest decision that she makes in her entire life. But Minority Leader Senator Tello Taitagui was not down with the lockdown. Shutting down the airport, I, I don't think that's going to help us at this point. Senator Taitagui saying if her colleagues and doctors want to ask the Magahaga questions, there are a lot of other more important questions they can ask her. Send letters asking why this is not done, why the skilled nursing unit has not been done. Where are the respirators? Where are That's the things that we should be asking her. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Earlier today, I interviewed the governor's chief policy advisor, Carlo Branch, to get his response to the call for a complete lockdown of flights coming into Guam. Branch says the challenge is that it would effectively cut us off from receiving aid by air. And if we issue a, uh, a request that is overly broad, we could suffer unintended consequences, not to mention that she does not have the legal authority under federal law to execute what some have requested. We know that that request comes out of fear, but imagine how much fear we would have if when we needed it because of what we requested, we couldn't get the resources or materials we need to keep us safe. Yeah, let me break that down for a minute, though. W wouldn't it be possible, though, to uh, allow for those supplies and medications to come in um, a as a, uh, a waiver from the, the general uh, prohibition from, uh, for, for flights? Wouldn't she be able to do sure. that? And secondly, um, I, I know that she, she doesn't have that authority, but uh, there is a way for her to get that authority from the White House or from, from Congress? Sure, and so I think as we have established, we received no indication uh, in terms of national policy that indicates to us that that is authority that we have or potentially will have. And while I, you know, while I respect the fact that waivers could be given, um, it becomes challenge when you say the the ability for us to get vital medical necessities is going to be dependent on someone. Um, potentially off-island to issue paperwork or not. And so what we know we can do is what we can control. We will air the interview with Branch in its entirety following our primetime newscast. Aside from the administration's response to a call for a full lockdown, he responds to other issues such as the status of test kits, the opening of the SNU facility in Barragata Heights, and the state of the island's economy. The interview is also streaming right now on our Facebook page. The numbers for the tourism industry are bleak and are expected to become bleaker. As of March 10, occupancy rates were down 50% and bookings will plunge further in April to 20 or 30%. Officials say global travel is way off and there's not much Guam can do to accept to wait it out. GVB Chairman Sonny Atta says the focus should be put to putting halt to the spread of the virus and that's in everyone's best interest. That's why it's critical these next two weeks. And I say critical. The next two weeks we have to lay low because if we can prevent this widespread, then we're back in business sooner than later. Um, and I don't want to put anything false out there. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be uh, painful. It's, yeah, it, it is. That's the reality. And, and just, just the important thing is stay safe, stay home, and, and, and we'll tackle this and, and rebound like Guam has done uh, before because we have to. We, have, we almost have nothing else. Ada says layoffs have already begun, but their hope is to bring back the employees. But right now, it's all about the health and safety of the people. The economy will come back, but everyone's just got to realize and take a break. There's, there's really nothing we can do. Soften the impact uh, as best we can. You know, businesses will do what they have to do. I'm at home working at home. Uh, I think many of the many businesses are starting to do that with their people, minimizing social contact. Um, so that's what we have to do at this point. And he says they've shaved down the budgets for similar smaller markets, that is, and will focus when the time comes on Korea and Japan.
President Trump is promising the biggest bailout in American history in an effort to rescue the U.S. economy from the coronavirus pandemic. This says the number of people infected with the virus grows to nearly 6,000 with more than 100 deaths. More communities are now clamping down on gatherings and hospitals are begging for more protective equipment. Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. With more businesses closing their doors and furloughing workers, the White House is asking for a massive economic stimulus package. Some estimate it could top a trillion dollars. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says it could include cash or a direct tax rebate sent to adult Americans within a matter of weeks. The president is determined we will put money back into this economy to protect hardworking Americans and small businesses. The Senate has vowed to stay in session until members can pass a separate multi-billion dollar relief package approved by the House that includes paid sick days and emergency leave for those impacted. My counsel to them is to gag and vote for it anyway, even if they think it has some shortcomings, and to address those shortcomings in the bill that we're in the process of crafting. Outside of Washington, San Francisco and parts of Southern California look like ghost towns. Residents are only allowed out of their homes to go to the grocery store or a doctor's appointment. Tuesday, the mayor of New York City suggested the Big Apple may go into lockdown within 48 hours. Here at the White House, President Trump spoke to restaurant and tours and executives, two of the industry's hardest hit by this ongoing crisis. He also talked to retail suppliers, thanking them for their efforts to keep shelves stocked. On the front lines, hospitals fear a shortage of ventilators. In Albany, Georgia, health care workers say they may run out of masks, gowns and gloves. What normally takes us six months, we've gone through in just one week. Today, Vice President Mike Pence urged construction companies to donate their N95 masks. One San Francisco Bay Area construction company heard the call. And we know they're in a dire need for masks. The Department of Defense has also announced it will donate 5 million surgical masks and 2,000 ventilators to help health care workers treat patients. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And four Brooklyn Nets players, including Kevin Durant, have tested positive for the new coronavirus, bringing the total to seven known players in the NBA. The American Medical Center announces that it has made a critical decision to cease regular clinical operations starting tomorrow and proactively focus care on sick and terminal patients. According to Dr. Hoa Nguyen, they received a call to help the Guam Memorial Hospital and have agreed to do so. Dr. Nguyen says they have agreed to have their Upper Tumon and Mangilao clinics to be used as satellite emergency rooms for GMH because they are overwhelmed with providing care for COVID patients. Service for established AMC patients will be postponed until further notice. Dr. Nguyen says he and the clinic's other principal partner, Dr. Vince Akimoto, are assuming the duty of serving alongside Guam's only government hospital to help alleviate the overflow of patients as they have reached their capacity. Again, AMC effective tomorrow will cease regular operations to focus on COVID-19 emergency. And stick around for more news here on Pride Time. Stay tuned. You're watching KYM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Even from the new triple lupa from Taco Bell. It's three mini chalupas with three different flavors. The new triple lupa from Taco Bell. The chalupa deliciously reinvented. 
Green Energy Solutions, Inc. would like to congratulate GU Self Storage along with Calvo Enterprises in doing their part by going green with a monthly power reduction by over 80%. Power consumption before installation was 39,700 kilowatt hours. After installation ended in 6,221 kilowatt hours, which resulted in savings over $10,000 a month. GESI also offers LED lights, solar thermal VRF air conditioning, and solar photovoltaics. Visit our website and let us help you save. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. And welcome back. The Superior Court of Guam dismissed Harvey Kansu's murder charges. Kansu and J.K. Sukian were indicted with murder and accused for the July 2019 deadly beating of a man identified as Maverick. In November of last year, Kansu's attorney Randy Cunliffe made oral arguments on the defense's motion for a dismissal on the basis of double jeopardy. During his arraignment, the court accepted Kansu's no contest plea on the initial assault charge as a misdemeanor, and it wasn't until later he was charged with murder. Cunliffe argues his client cannot be prosecuted for a greater offense if he was previously convicted of the lesser included offense. Judge Arthur Barcinas ruled on the matter this week and ultimately agreed with the defense in his decision and order. Barcinas states the people, however, have failed. You may have seen this disturbing video circulating on social media of a military personnel holding a dead dog and using it for exercise and allegedly promoting animal cruelty. KUAM's Adriana Cotera speaks with Guam Animals in Need President Cyrus Lure for further information on the matter. Personnel Griffin Reed says in a video that he did not make it to the gym and instead will do what he calls puppy curls. For purposes of the disturbing footage, KUAM has blurred a portion of the video. Now, what you do is you hit a dog in the street because you live in Guam and they're everywhere. And the government is really bad about helping out. Oh, you get a great pump. Further, Reed continues to pump the dead dog up and down and says this is about a 30-pound puppy curl. And then you just uh, you eat it right into the jungle. This video has gone viral and circulated various social media platforms and WhatsApp chat groups. Guam Animals in Need received the footage and gained President Cyrus Lur says local law enforcement is aware, as are Guam lawmakers, leaders, and animal control. Lur tells KUAM that various people immediately contacted Gain for their assistance. So we posted it to the Gain Facebook page, and within a couple of hours, we had uh, uh, over 30 people contact us with additional information, the person's name, he is uh, enlisted uh, well, on Guam, he's military personnel. Lur says Facebook took the video down from their Gain page because of the disturbing imagery. However, that did not stop others in the community from sharing it. Reed went on to make a public video apology explaining a backstory that defended his action and shares his message that he states was not included in the original post. As I was coming home from work, um, I felt a little bump coming around a corner. Um, I looked in my rear view. There was a dog. A dog that he recognized and he believed to have been dead for a couple of hours. Reed says in the apology video that he went to the dog owner's home and he dismissed him. So um, I went back to my house, uh, grabbed a glove and carried it uh, about a half mile down the road. Um, and, uh, and that's when, um, you know, once I got to the jungle, that's when I did that video. Um, and it was in poor taste. Um, again, it was graphic and morbid. Um, which brings me to my third point. What I was trying to express was the maltreatment of dogs um, and animals in general. While Reed justified the initial video through his apology, Lur says he appreciates Reed taking responsibility, but this kind of humor is in bad taste and undermines the volunteer work the military has done over the years at GAIN. Overall, I mean, I understand that uh, it can be frustrating to see uh, the, you know, the condition of animals on island, but this is definitely a, a, uh, the wrong way to go about uh, handling it. I'm glad that he's recognizing that what he did was wrong and that he is apologizing. Uh, Gaines' role at this point is not to adjudicate or investigate. We forwarded all the information, including the original uh, video, plus uh, 
thoughts, comments to the uh, uh, military authorities who are investigating this. KUAM requested an interview with the U.S. Military Anderson Air Force Base Guam Public Affairs Office. They have declined an interview and, as of news time, have not provided a statement. As for Reed, he concluded his apology post with this. If you do have any questions, um, you know, reach out to me. I'd be happy to clarify anything. Um, you know, I care about animals. And uh, this video didn't do the greatest of job representing that. KUAM reached out to Reed for clarification and he declined comment. Gain reminds the community if you need to report an animal's death or witness any form of animal abuse, you can contact their office at 671-653-4246. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. A federal indictment charges Evan Daniel Montvel Cohen with aggravated identity theft. According to court documents, Montvel Cohen allegedly used the identity of a man from November 11th to November 19th of last year. He was supposedly going to hire the man from Florida at his company, C2 Social, and he obtained the victim's personal and financial information and used it to rent an apartment in Guam. The realtor uncovered the fraud in early January. Montvel Cohen's arraignment on the indictment has been set for March 25th. We should mention back in 2009, Montvel Cohen was sentenced in the First Circuit Court of Hawaii to five years probation and ordered to pay 30000 in restitution for a similar offense. Dave Nagato is next, so with sports, keep it right here. Every day a plus. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. It's a celebration at Cars Plus Guam. During our Jeep celebration event, receive up to $2,000 off on the all-new 2020 Jeep Gladiator, the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck. Customize your Gladiator the way you want it. Call 477-7807 or visit our website and get pre-approved online at carsplusguam.com today. Taco Bell reinvented the Chalupa, so why can't I reinvent myself? I'm an influencer. What? I mean... Guys, I'm trying to fly here. The new Triple Lupa from Taco Bell. The Chalupa deliciously reinvented. Attention Guam business owners. Green Energy Solutions would like to help you save on your power bill. We supply various LED lighting, energy efficient air conditioners, solar thermal VRF systems, and solar panels. You can count on our product warranty and quick turnaround and immediate response service. GESI has saved other local businesses over 80% off their power. Call us to see how much we can save your business. Call us today at 647-8111 or visit GESIGuam.com for more information. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects. And I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes and I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't do that. You know what's a good thing too, is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, 
So that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We start the show off tonight with some soccer news out of the Guam Football Association as the organization has stopped all practices, games, and leagues along with usage of the facility. Check it out. In accordance with Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's mandate to suspend sports activities in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, Guam Football Association will be halting indefinitely all leagues and other football-related events, including national program training. The executive committee yesterday morning uh, ha held a, an emergency meeting, and we decided to stop all football-related or soccer programs here on island. Our decision to stop it is for, of course, the safety of our players, our coaches, our fans, and most especially, you know, the island. So in this respect, GFA has sent out a notice to all clubs that all football-related and soccer activities will cease and postpone until a later date. The indefinite suspension covers ongoing leagues, including the Triple J Auto Group Robbie Weber Youth League, Aloha Made Minnegut Cup Elite Youth League, Bud Light Women's Soccer League, and the Budweiser Soccer League. So field usage here at JFA has been restricted. We're not allowing any activity here at JFA for now. And then also our staff hours now have been reduced from 10 to 4, Monday to Friday. So during this shutdown, we have our maintenance crew doing all of our sanitation uh, work here on our facility. We're making sure that we are clean. Uh, so when the, t when, when the leagues uh, start up again, everything will be back to normal. New dates for Guam's March matches of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 qualifiers of the Asian Zone Round 2 will be announced at a later date once finalized with FIFA and AFC following discussions with the Philippines Football Federation and Chinese Football Association, the Matau Guam men's national team was originally slated to play against the Philippines on March 26 in Manila and against China PR in Thailand on March 31st. Possible venue changes also may be made for the matches. If you'd like to uh, find out more information, you could go to guamfa.com or you can go on our Twitter account. And so all our messages of all the new or current events that are going to be happening at GFA will be posted on that website. The Hopaday Pledge is definitely is like an extension of the Hopaday spirit, which is all about family. It doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. I, I wear this uniform. I'm definitely proud of my job and what we do. I not only live it, in the uniform but outside of the uniform as well. It's definitely a way of life. I live the Half Day Pledge every day of my life. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Dear people who haven't had a Big Mac, it can feel like the whole world is out there enjoying them without you. You might wonder, is it too late for me? Look who's enjoying that special sauce on their special day. From firemen to crossing guards to, oh, this one's really rubbing it in. But even if you've never had McDonald's, most McDonald's burger, today could be the day that changes. Now available in three sizes. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. It's a celebration at Cars Plus Guam. During our Jeep celebration event, receive up to $2,000 off on the all-new 2020 Jeep Gladiator, the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck. Customize your Gladiator the way you want it. 
Call 477-7807 or visit our website and get pre-approved online at carsplusguam.com today. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. All right, my friends, on this Wednesday, March 18th, Koani Reese Mindiola has the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday shout-outs all to herself. So, happy birthday to the princess. Love mommy, daddy, and the family. It is Koani Reese's birthday number two. So happy birthday to you, not only from your family, but all of us at KUM, all your friends at Cold Stone Creamery, and Guamanians throughout the world. We hope you and your family have a wonderful, happy birthday. And remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and your birthday. That'll do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Good night, everyone. Closed captioning is brought to you by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Visit GESIGuam.com or call 647-8111 for more details on how we can help you.